Morning, guys. Uh, my name is Mike Bell. I've been teaching in Floyd County Schools for about 22 years. And uh, here the last few years, I've finally come to the realization that I've, I feel like I've let down my students a whole lot. Um, we want to guide our students, but the problem is sometimes we forget to take the cap off. <laughs> we want to limit them more than sometimes we want to challenge them and just let them do their own thing. Um, the giving room was all about that. It was completely a maker space on steroids to where the kids, when they came in, they were not limited in what they wanted to create and what they wanted to do. The only requirement that they had was they had to do something for somebody else. And it was twofold. One, I wanted them to understand helping somebody makes a difference, not in just that person's life, but in theirs too. The other thing was I wanted to just to see how creative and how far they would actually go uh, in this process. Uh, from day one, those were pretty much the only limitations that I gave to them. Uh, we provided the money that we uh, uh, obtained through KVEC, uh, went to buy them technological devices uh, from microcomputers to servos to uh, helping with uh, printing, whatever, whatever they needed to make their project work, uh, we used that money for it. Um, this year, these are just a few projects that we actually were able to uh, go through. And actually today I, I was planning on bringing a bunch of kids, but they're working today. <laughs> so I couldn't, I, I couldn't bring them with me. And they were like, look, Mr. Bell, we need to get this finished. So I left them at school and I said, hey, do you think? But we have a, a program called AES Cares that was developed. Uh, it has four out, outgrowths from it. One, uh, we just completed our blessings box filing. The kids actually went and gathered the donations. I did not make one phone call to anyone. They had to figure out who they had to call, what materials they need. They designed their own box to where it will set outside of our fence. Now, what's really cool about it is once it's out and it's up, which should be this week, uh, they'll be able to keep it stocked and our community will be able to come and get what they need. Anything from coats to water, canned food, whatever we can put in there for our community to help out. We are in the part of Floyd County where it is, um, you know, we struggle sometimes and families just need a little bit of help. So uh, that is one area. Inside the school, we did a thing called homework helps. Uh, a lot of our middle school students uh, we would send out and during the day they would go down and mentor students and they would help students in the classroom. They also after school twice a week would stay for about 40 minutes and do homework help. So with our primary kids. So we're, we're building a mentorship program where the, the younger kids are now seeing these older kids not just as, as bigger than they are but as friends and people that can truly help them. Uh, we also went outside, back outside of our school um, with uh, foster care. Uh, some of our kids uh, are in the foster care system. And those children wanted to be able to do something to where, you know, if you are uh, having to travel from home to home, to give them something to travel with instead of a garbage bag. They actually went out and received donations for awesome duffel bags that says AES Cares on them, and they loaded them down with blankets and plush toys and, and coloring books and encouraging notes that they would write. So now if a foster child is taken to a new home, they've uh, networked with Mountain Comp and they now have an awesome duffel bag that they can give this child to put their belongings in and things that they would need. Um, we didn't, I didn't, I made a promise to them that if they wanted to do this, they had to do it. So they made contacts, they made community connections on their own. And through that process, I watched these kids grow. They learned to talk on a telephone. They learned to not be shy about asking for things. It's okay to be told no. And they would come back and they would be frustrated. They were like, how can they tell us no? I'm like, welcome to life. Now let's figure out 
who we need to contact to be able to, to progress this. They worked with our Family Resource Center. Uh, we had some students create a project called Forget Me Not. They were worried about kids and uh, being left in hot cars. They realized that, hey, it wasn't just parents that were struggling with, um, you know, intoxication, leaving their kid. People would get in a hurry. Actually, the top reason kids die, that little babies are, are left in hot cars, is just forgetting about them. Like the parent would go to work and they were supposed to drop the baby off at daycare and they start talking about other things and completely the child's asleep and they forget that the child's even in the back car. But they made a really cool device that actually attaches to the car seat that uh, when the temperature gets to a certain temperature, they learned how to code, they learned how to uh, realize that when it hits a certain temperature, it alarms. Uh, they are actually working today on a Bluetooth device that actually pairs with your phone, so when you're 10 feet away from the car, it'll actually give you a notification, hey, did you check to see if your child's in the car? So that's what they're, one project that they're working on today. AES, AES Safe Schools, um, <clears throat> the students had the opportunity to use things like circuit playgrounds and servos to um, uh, help for the safety of our school. It's not going to completely, you know, stop something, but it may slow a person down if they did get into the building. They made a metal detecting glove that when a, that would actually you can rub over top of a book bag and it would it would actually come up with uh, some metal if it finds some type of metal in in the book bag they worked on servo uh, door jams and we have a, a access road that goes around our school that has gates on it oh, all right uh, they figured out first how they could use different types of little microcomputers to, to control it, but they were like, Mr. Bell, we can do this better. So in the last about two months, they figured out how to actually Bluetooth the thing and they can control everything from their phone instead of pushing a, a manually pushing a button. They recoded the device to where they could actually control it with a phone. And then we have an on-campus radio station that has now actually went worldwide. They have built their own server, they've housed it, and now they are able to, you can actually connect to it uh, online. So those are just a few things that we've done, but one of the, probably one of the best things that has come out of this is the 80% of students that we tried to target that are in the middle, the top 10%, they're going to succeed. The bottom 10%, we've got all kinds of things in place to help them succeed. It's the 80% 80, 80 in the middle that sometimes just fall through the cracks because they don't cause problems, they don't have issues, and sometimes they're just real quiet. So we made a point this year to really focus on those and provide stuff for them through this grant to be able to help them. We have seen amazing results from it. We have seen kids that have struggled just to be included, to be able to be showcased where they're actually teaching now and teaching with confidence. Uh, they can do something that nobody else can do through augmented reality or through uh, how to create a website from scratch. Um, you know, for them, that's what this is all about. It's about taking that cap off, challenging them, and just doing it. So we've, uh, we've seen some really great success for, from it. And now we're seeing the fruit of what the time they gave up. Because the giving room is about giving something of yourself, which is your time. Maybe it's something at night. Maybe it's not playing two hours of games at night. Maybe it's playing one and then working on this project. So we're trying to teach them to prioritize of what, what is a true priority in life as well. So any questions? Yeah. Uh, we have I actually had to start through eight. This focus was on our middle school kids. And, but we tried to tie it into where they reach down to primary as well as, as making huge um, parts, uh, you know, really affecting our community as well. <clears throat> In this program, uh, we've had over the whole middle school, we have 120 in the middle school. Um, actively, we've got about 70 that, that are really active and involved in this program. Uh, we'll send out in um, um, every every about 40 minutes from 8 to 10, which is our primary's big math and reading time. 
we would send anywhere from 10 to 15 students uh, every 40 minutes to the primary to do one-on-one -on -one work. And our, our teachers love it because now they're at a point where the kids come in and the teacher doesn't really have to say anything to them. They just jump in there and do it. So it's pretty neat.